Grade 8 math number 12.1d, we're still talking about the Pythagorean theorem, and now we're going to talk about the edge of a square that's sticking outside of a circle. So take a look at this drawing. This is a square circumscribed around a circle. The circle's completely inside the square, see that? So it's circumscribed. This circle is not circumscribed by the square because parts of it are sticking out. In order for it to be circumscribed, it needs to be completely inside that square. See that? We can even put a square inside of a circle and say that the square is circumscribed by the circle. We could do it either way, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how far this little distance is from the edge of the circle right here to this point, this corner. And you can even do it if it was circumscribed. You could go from the edge here to the point here. So it doesn't matter if it's circumscribed or not. As long as you've got a circle and you're trying to figure out what this little piece is that's hanging over the edge of the circle, we could do the same thing that we're going to do. So for either drawing, we can find the distance between the edge of the circle and that corner of the square to the nearest hundredth of an inch. We're going to use the formula for area of a square, which is S to the second power, that's side times side. You know, if there's three on this side and three on this side, we can do three times three or three squared. That's nine units here. See, side times side, S squared. We're also gonna use the formula for the area of a circle, which is pi R squared. So that's approximately 3.14 times the radius times the radius. And it's approximately because you know how long pi is. It goes on forever, okay? So here's the drawing again just like this one. And we're going to go with this one instead of the circumscribed one. Now you're going to do this in geometry in high school. So this is going to be really interesting. All right. So a square is centered on a circle. All right. This square is centered on the circle. And both the square and the circle have an area of 16 inches. All right. Now, in reality, it would be hard for the square and the circle to both have an area of 16 inches exactly. The circle might have thousandths of an inch or something. But just for the sake of this problem, we're going to say they both have an area of 16 inches, okay? We want to find out how far to the nearest hundredth of an inch is each corner point from the edge of the circle. Now remember, hundredths on the other side of the decimal point, that's tenths and that's hundredths. So if you don't, if you end up going any farther past two places, past this decimal point, you're going to be doing a lot of extra work you don't need to do. You can use it to round to get to, you know, that hundredth, okay? So, to have an area of 16 inches, that square must have a side of 4 and 4, right? Because the S squared is the area. So, for S squared to be 16, it must be 4 times 4. So, that side's 4 inches, and that side's 4 inches. Well, guess what? If the square has 4 inch sides, half of a side is 2 inches. See? 2 inches, 2 inches. And, if this side's 2 inches, that means the center comes out at two inches. See that? So that means we have one leg that's two inches and another leg that's two inches and a hypotenuse C. So we're going to have a two inch leg, a two inch leg, and our hypotenuse C. And the hypotenuse is going to run from this center point all the way to this point outside on the edge of the square. Okay? Think of it as like a cracker with a tomato on it or a hamburger with a slice of American cheese. And we're trying to figure out how much is laying over the edge. Okay, so we know that we've got a 2-inch leg, a 2-inch leg, and a hypotenuse. So we use the Pythagorean theorem, and we get a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is 2 in squared plus 2 squared, see, is going to equal the c squared. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 2 is 4. That means 8 is equal to c squared. Or... What we can do is take this little square off here, make it a regular C, and put it on the other side on the 8 by putting a radical symbol around the 8. See? That takes the little 2 exponent off of the C, and it throws the burden of being squared onto the 8. See that? Now, we also could have said 2 times the square root of 2. See? We have uh, 2 to the second power and 2 to the second power. See that? Square root of 2 and square root, square root of 2. Well, there's two of them. So it's 2 times 2 squared. See? So 
we do a little math on the side, and I tried 2.5, because I thought maybe that would be the square of 8, and I got 6.25. That was way too small. And I tried 2.8 times 2.8, thinking that could be the square of 8. And I got 7.84. That was too small. So I upped it up a little bit, because I remembered it said we could go to the nearest hundredth of an inch. So I tried 2.83, and look what I got. 2.83 times 2.83 is 8.0089, and if we go to the hundredths, it's 8. See that? So I'm going to use 2.83, and you know what? We can't use an equal sign because it's not really equal, is it? We're going to have to use an approximate symbol because it isn't exactly 8. It's 8.0089. So 2.83 is approximately C, okay? So that means from this center point to here, this area is 2.83, okay? From the outside corner to the very center, all right? So now, keep that in mind. We're going to tuck that off on the side. Now what we're going to do is find the radius of the circle. Now, the area of the circle was given as 16 inches. It said that they both had an area of 16, the circle and the square. So that means, using the formula for the area of a circle, it's pi r squared. Well, if that's the area of a circle and the area is 16, we can say 16 equals pi r squared. Just put it in place of the words. See that? Now, we need to get the r, the radius, to one side. So we divide both sides by pi to change the formula to fit our needs because we're trying to find the radius. So we need to get this r on one side of the equal sign by itself. So what we do is we divide both sides by pi. And you know what that does? It eliminates this one because it creates our friend the invisible one, right? So that means we've got one r here. And that gives us 16 over pi. So now this is our formula. We've got 16 over pi equals r squared. Now, remember I said these are always, the fractions are always little division problems. So what is 16 divided by pi? Wouldn't that be 16 divided by approximately 3.14? So we do the math, and I came up with 5.095 and some other numbers. So I have to figure out what times what equals approximately 5.095. Now, we can take this little square sign off, like we did down here for the C, and we can put the radical sign around our fraction. By putting a radical sign over the fraction, we remove the little 2 from the R. See? And we flip it onto this side of the equation. See that? On that side of the equal sign. So I did some math, and 2.2 times 2.2 was too small. We're trying to get to 5.095, and that was only 4-something. So... I tried 2.24 times 2.24, and I got 5.0176, still not big enough. Then I got to 2.26, and that came out as 5.10. Now look, to the nearest hundredth, that's like 5.10, and I'm trying to get to 0.95. See that? So actually, that one will work. So I'm going to use an approximate symbol, right? Because it's not exact, so it's approximately 2.26. So now, we've got this 2.26 is the radius of the circle. That's from the center here to the red edge. That's the radius of the circle. Remember, it's half the diameter. And we know that the hypotenuse was 2.83. Remember, we figured that out before? So now we've got these two measures. We're trying to figure out this little piece right here. We're trying to figure out between here and here this space. So if this whole thing is 2.83 and this is 2.26, all we have to do is subtract. We subtract the circle's radius from the hypotenuse and we get approximately 0.57. So remember, because of pi, it's all approximate. So we know that's approximately 0.57 inches in between here, okay? That's the measure of that space right there. See how we did that? And like I said, we can do this whether the circle is circumscribed or not. It doesn't matter. 
as long as there's a little piece sticking out, we can use the Pythagorean theorem and make a triangle and use the area of a circle to figure out what that is. See? Okay, so that's the edge of a square that's sticking out of a circle. And like I said, you're going to do this in high school geometry. And isn't anyone going to be surprised when you already understand how to do this? Won't that be cool? Okay, keep your chin up. I know geometry can be really confusing, but just like a video game, don't quit. Just because a level's hard, you got to beat it, okay? You got to win. All right, I'll see you next video. Bye.